Good evening. We welcome our parishioners and visitors to St. Jerome's Catholic Church. Thank you for being with us to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass on the Nativity of the Lord. We will be holding a second collection for Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities serves the most vulnerable in our community with counseling, pregnancy support, and financial assistance. As we prepare to enter into the sacred mystery of the liturgy, please be sure that all cell phones are turned off or in silent mode. Jesus, our Savior, is born to give joy to the world and to save us from sin. Though almighty and powerful, God strips himself of his glory and makes himself small. This God became man is the one that we welcome tonight. He is our Emmanuel, our God with us. Please stand. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My friends, welcome on this celebration of the Nativity of our Lord. We gathered here tonight to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. God the Emmanuel was born before us. And as the Lord has saved us, and as we receive him, we call to mind our sins, asking the loving Lord to grant us mercy and compassion. Let us all together say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year as we await in hope of our redemption, grant it just as we joyfully welcome the only begotten Son, our Redeemer. We may also merit to face Him confidently when He comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Be to God. your throne for all generations forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord blessed the people who know the joyful shout in the line of your countenance O Lord they walk at your name they rejoice all the day, and though your justice they are exalted, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch and Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up and he motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. 
the God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With an uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded him, his coming, by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When, Jesus, when Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Today see you, Lord, Jesus Christ. Well, good evening, and Merry Christmas to everyone. So before I start this homily, I have a little housekeeping to do. Um, during the creed, which will be after the homily, um, during the part where we would normally bow, tonight we will kneel. So you can just follow Father and I's my lead. Uh, we just didn't want to surprise you. So I thank you for all being here tonight. It's so nice to see such a crowded church. This is great. So obviously we are celebrating the vigil of the nativity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I like how this gospel passage starts. 
This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. Like we haven't heard that story before. Last weekend, I was speaking with a parishioner when she came up to let me know that she really had enjoyed my homily about remembering to keep Christ in Christmas and how it should affect all our lives that I spoke last weekend. And I thanked her, and then I asked if she would pray for me about this homily. And the reason I asked her is because I find that writing a homily about a big feast day like Christmas or any of the days celebrated during the Triduum are especially difficult because we have heard the gospel readings so many times in our lives. So many, in fact, that they become incredibly familiar or ordinary. When I write a homily, I want to try and put an interesting twist on it or point to it. When you are approached with a gospel reading that everyone has heard over and over and has become so familiar, it becomes much more difficult. Well, when I began to pray about preaching this evening, I found my answer, and it came out of the ordinary or familiar. We come here this evening to celebrate the birth of Christ, which should be far from an ordinary event, even if we have heard the story before. The incarnation of Christ is one of the most important things in all of history, right behind his resurrection. Yet many may doze off during the reading of this passage because it is so familiar. Where is the excitement or the extraordinariness that we long for? Isn't that why we got dressed up this evening? because we knew that something special was about to take place. You know, it is still here, that something special, right in front of our faces. We just have to change our mindset just a little bit to see the fantastic right in front of us. But don't worry, though. You aren't in this alone. And this gospel reading is not the only ordinary thing that we find in Mass. So let us break break it open a little to find the hidden gems that we celebrate every time we celebrate Mass. First off, we are blessed to be given 168 hours a week to live our lives. We all spend that time differently. Many may even feel that their lives are boring or unfulfilled because we don't normally have much excitement in them. We wake up in the morning and go to school or work. We get done what's required of us. We eat, do homework, or whatever else we have planned to get done that day. We then go to bed and start the cycle all over again. It's called life. But you know, God has more in store for you as part of his plan. He saves at least one hour of each week. When he calls us into communion to celebrate his wonderful love for us, that special hour, or hours if you go to Mass more frequently, during the week that we set aside. And obviously, it's known as Mass. This special hour of the day is where we are blessed to encounter the divine. But we must intentionally open our eyes so this hour may unfold in all of its beauty to destroy the ordinary in our lives. We start by entering in the back of the church, blessing ourselves with holy water to remember the moment we were recreated as sons and daughters of God washed clean from original sin to dwell forever in his presence. We then proceed to our chosen seat. Here's an idea. Sit somewhere else, out of the ordinary. Really shake it up. I know there are those out there that this thought is traumatic. Imagine what it may be like if you choose to sit in the front of the church as opposed to being forced 
to by the ushers because you arrived a little bit late and this is your penance. <laughs> Mass then begins to unfold in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We are freed from our venial sin during the penitential rite and we join the choirs of angels as we sing glory to God in the highest and peace to his people of goodwill. This gathering that we are blessed to be a part of literally joined with those around the world and in heaven to sing in joyous adoration to the God that loves us so much he sent his only son in the form of an infant so that he could experience everything that we experience except sin. We then find God truly present in the words we hear from living scripture. Words that are timeless and always worth hearing. Readings from the Old Testament and the New. Culminating in words from Christ himself in the humble form of the priest or deacon in persona Christi. How often do we realize what a gift it is to hear these words and how blessed we are to come into his presence. We then transition from the liturgy of the word to that of the Eucharist by bringing our prayers, our cares, and our hearts up to this altar as gifts to a loving God. As simple gifts of bread and wine are brought forward, we are invited to stand and participate in the saving work of God, where bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, a perfect sacrifice given once and for all time for us, completely undeserved, but nonetheless given out of incredible love. We are joined together through all time and history to participate at the foot of the cross where Christ gave his life for the ransom of many. How amazing and far from ordinary. We then pray as Christ himself taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We are then given the great privilege to come forward with hands outstretched and eyes focused on heaven as we receive the greatest gift that Christ could ever give, his body and his blood. We are blessed to take Christ literally within ourselves so that he can change us from within and bring us closer to that all-encompassing love. Finally, after being fed with this heavenly host, we are asked to bring, out, bring it out into the world into the other 167 hours of the week we are all called to be his hands and feet where we are blessed to do his saving work by building the kingdom of God this story this event this extraordinary time that we are given not only powers us for the rest of the week but waits for us to return the following week you see, this is not something that is commonplace. It may be seen as familiar or ordinary, and you know, it is anything but. It is here that we encounter God, where heaven literally kisses earth on this altar, and we are blessed to be a part of it all. We are called to step out in faith week after week, and we are guided on this wonderful journey. This is why we come. This is why the ordinary becomes extraordinary. For those that may not come week after week or are new here, Christ invites you to change, to take that leap of faith and come each and every week into his loving presence. Take that step of faith and let God in. Let him open your life in such a way that the ordinariness becomes extraordinary. When you start to live your life with Christ at its center, the ordinariness falls away and you begin to experience the same things the saints experienced and your life will never be the same. Just think, 
it all started with the birth of an infant. A simple, ordinary birth that at the time, most of the world ignored. But a birth that literally shook the entire universe. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. Amen and Merry Christmas. Let us all together stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the God and Son of God, born the Father before all the ages, God from God, light from light, true God, true to God, be God and not made, for our sins are little Father, who of all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven. Please kneel. Please stand. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the Son of the Father and the Son, where the Father, the Son is adored and glorified. Yes, the prophets. I believe the Holy, Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess. I the baptism for the sickness of sins and to look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel, we present to you, O Father, our hopes our fears and our longings, trusting in your faithfulness and compassion, we pray. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Fill the church with your Holy Spirit, so that it may proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth without fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May our brothers and sisters who cannot be here with their families tonight, frontliners in hospitals, migrant workers abroad, soldiers on duty, prisoners in jail, experience the comfort of your presence through the generosity and companionship of the people they encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let the good, no good news of your coming resound throughout the world so that people will hear and acknowledge the comforting words of hope and promise of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially Dieter Breeden, find physical and spiritual renewal in you. And may our faithfully departed be fed the heavenly bread as they become eternally in communion with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the intentions of our family and friends, for the intentions in our book of prayers, for the special intentions that we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for Danilo Palamata, for whom this Mass is being offered, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving Father, hear our prayers and make this Christmas celebration a moment of thanksgiving and a great sharing. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Sacrifice and yours and made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, the Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you with all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We will come to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind. So that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels and the thrones and the dominions and all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we don't end, we acclaim. Yeah. 
You are indeed the Lord, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. With your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, make holy these gifts. We have, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took the bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith For O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and ascension into heaven as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you, Lord, in thanksgiving, this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles, and all the saints, and the glorious martyrs, and his constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Barry our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, and are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory to Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him, in him, O God, the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we there to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive 
forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy be always free from sin and safe from all distresses we await. The blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, is said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly misery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You, all, you all look great tonight. Even I myself, in almost three years of my ministry here at St. Jerome, it is the first time I wear this vestment. It's been there hanging in the sacristy, and it's been offered to me many times to wear, but I see it looks so thick and heavy. But when I wore it tonight, I see, well, this is really special and reserved for this Christmas day. Well, similar as you are, all of you has reserved all your special clothes tonight. And indeed, as what I said, all of us look great in the celebration of Christmas and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was really moved and caught seeing you coming over together with your loved ones and your families in our church. The past how many years was very rough and challenging for us, and it's indeed happy to see, and we are so blessed to celebrate together this Christmas in this church fully packed and complete. Let us bless the Lord and let's give them a round of applause. There is no such a strong pandemic or a challenging time or whatever is that be. The power of the Lord will altogether heal us and will make us strong and will get through all of these challenges as well. I would like to thank all our liturgy committee who has prepared this holy sacrifice at the Mass, led by our dearly beloved Ivy D. Lee and Yolanda Fuller, who has prepared all the Christmas decorations. The parish staff of St. Jerome, Margie, Andrew, and the rest of our staff, thank you very much. <laughs> Deacon Grimm for the very um, moving sermon tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> and of course, our music ministry, Patricia Van He and our youth. And all of us here, we welcome to our adopted son here at St. Jerome, Seminar and Chase Imuro. Let's go, Chase! He will be staying here until the 26th, and um, we pray for your holy perseverance, Chase. Okay, and for all of us here together as we celebrate this. It's Christmas, and to all of those who have contributed, our ushers, our lecturers, and if I ever forgot somebody or a certain group in our, um, in our celebration tonight, um, God knows that you have been working and serving our parish tonight. And in behalf of our parish community, I would like to thank you and greet you for all of your love and support to our dear parish and um, extend all my prayers and love to all your families. May all of us have a blessed Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Let us now stand to receive the blessing. The Lord be with you. With Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May 
May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by the glorious birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine in your hearts the light of virtue. Amen. May God the will, the great joy of his Son's saving birth, be announced to the shepherds and the angel. Fill your minds in the gladness he gives, and may you be heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of peace, joy, and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.